presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. This is awesome. Uh, come on, vous We're going over to Paris. What's happening? Hey, Tom. It's Adam from Paris. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Adam. Yourself? That's good. Long time no talk. I appreciate everything you've done for me and my family over the years. So, well, we uh, appreciate you growling problem with us. Yeah, 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 sir. Uh, I've done gold reports and all the softwares and all your books and read it generation thank you. you are, seminars, thank so you so much. Appreciate it. Yes, yeah, sir. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Serve the one you love. Once you decide to be a couple, you're there to serve the one you love, to serve your love to your lover. And every kiss and every touch, you feel you're there to please the one you love without expecting anything back. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 60, NASDAQ's up 117, SP's up 17. Gold, gold contract down $25.50, trading at 1978 an ounce. We have silver down 22 cents, $23.67 an ounce. Light sweet crude down a buck, $71.79 a barrel. Notes and bonds, a 10 year note. Down 20 ticks, trading 113.30. The 30 year off 27 at 127.30 in King Dollar. King Dollar's on the move top side, up 697 ticks, 103.578. The euro is at 107. The yen is trading at 138. And the British pound is at 124 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877 927 6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? We go over to the SPY first. We get, have had some nice volatility out here today, no doubt. We take a look at the SPY. Right now, the SPY's up a buck 80. You're going after the swing high. Now, the swing high that we're, we're dealing with out here is the swing high that was back in January. That's 418.31. Now, we hit 418.06 today. So... The bottom line is that it's getting close to tagging. It hasn't tagged it yet. You know, I wish that it actually did tag it today. I mean, we got close to it, we didn't tag it. Because what you have here is that you, you're doing volume of 60 million versus that 101. So a test is a test, but a test, folks, is when it actually tags it and it hasn't tagged it yet. So close, but hasn't done it yet. Now, the other swing that we're talking about, which it took out, was the 417. 62 and right now we're at 417.13 what the difference is is this is that this wouldn't be a failure even if it closed underneath it because of the fact that we we're already at 62 million shares versus that last high or the 60 million shares versus that last high of 62 million that's how that works when you're looking at price and volume and inside of the context um that's how it works that's the bottom line so we need a few more pennies up there we go into the NDX 100, you get a whole different animal happening inside the NDX. There's no doubt about this, man. So inside the NDX, what do we have happening? You got a higher high. Now the, the swing point we're dealing with in the NDX, and this is going to be on the weekly now. And, you know, we just went from 304 on the Qs to 335 in a heartbeat. And you can see what's happening here. The swing you're going after there is the 334.47. And right now, we are at 335.67, so you're a buck 20 over it. On the weekly basis, it can, it can make it, you know, it can make the volume too. It's, uh, the volume they were talking about is 270, 2, 223 you need, and right now we're already at uh, 170. So that can make it, you know. And if that's the case, then you're really going to see something, uh, because the next swing point up there is 371. So it's pretty intense. Notes and bonds. We take a look at the note and bond market. Ten-year note right now is coming down to 1.5 million contracts. 
you know, you come in, it's a still larger contract volume, much larger actually, but let's see what kind of retracement we've already done thus far. So you come in into the 0.618. I suspect you're gonna get it because if you look at this, watch this. You're gonna see that's where all the volume is too. All the volume is right here on that bar. That bar there is come, well, look at this. You're talking about the bottom of that bar is, we're at 113, the bottom of the bar of strength, there's two of them actually, but the first one that's coming into right now is 112.23. That's a monster bar. The bar before it is also a monster bar, so, you know, we'll see how that baby shakes out. We get over to the gold contract. Gold contract's going south as the dollar's going north. And you take a look at the gold contract. We have with the gold contract, you're down with... Uh, Interesting. Okay, so GC, one second. Yeah, we're rolling. I see what's happening here, too. Okay. We're rolling. This is this has a lot lower to go. That's the real bottom line. Okay, so we're at 1977 on this contract. We already broke the consolidation on the contract. That sets up, you know, the next leg here. Well, we already hit 19, 1962, 1930, 1930s game. If you go to the XAU, the HUI, we were talking about this this week, the bottom line. It's making its way down to the last time we had any volume. It's pretty amazing, actually, that it's made its way down there in four days. You know, bottom line on Monday, we sold in the gold report. And I sold specifically because of this. So, in the XAU, we're talking about that number, 125, and that seemed like a big number on Monday. <laughs> it was a big number, but it came down there fast and furious. On the gold, on the gold bugs index, did the same type of setup, you know, and it's gonna be interesting to see how it hits this inside of the XAU and the HUI, because if that baby comes back with too much volume into it, you know, that's gonna be a little, that's gonna be not only a little problem, it's gonna be a larger problem. And you can see the gold bugs index we're down at 249, the number we're talking about is 244. And in four days, we just went from 271. So, GDX is gonna be the same type of setup. This is how, this is how tr gold trades too, folks. That's the bottom line. It's just how it trades, man. The GDX has an expansion of volume out here today. The number on the GDX is the 3103, and we just went from that Monday morning from 34 to 3170. We'll see how it handles us down, down there. So some of the higher volume equities out here, we take a look at, you have uh, Tesla's up uh, a buck and a half. You got Advanced Micro up three bucks. Nvidia, look at Nvidia, oh my God. <laughs> Nvidia's up 15 bucks. And you still only have a 1.5% uh, shot position in it. But bottom line is that they, when they move in video, they move in video in a monster way. Stay right there, folks. We got our man, Mr. Tim Wood, coming back as he does uh, each and every Thursday to uh, recap the uh, indices out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 28, NASDAQ is up 130, S&P's up 21. We're going to come right back with Tim. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. 
Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks, to Dow. Dow Industrial is down 16. NASDAQ is up 144. S&P is up 24. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And you can reach Tim every trading day, folks, at ord.org. That's ord-oracle.com. That's ord-oracle.com. Tim's going to be doing a workshop for us in the uh, next few weeks. We'll uh, announce this workshop next week. He has some great tools Tim Wood, what's going on? All right. Uh, we kind of I wanted an update uh, last week. We were looking at the gold market. Yes. And and I'm, I'm thinking we're going to move higher all the way into uh, August and possibly to the 44 area on GDX. Okay. And since then, the market has, in my opinion, on at least GDX, I think it's probably an ABC down. So I wanted to update those charts, what they said. Okay. We did. Uh, the first chart is the, uh, let's see which one here. Is which the, one the do you want me to start with, Tim? Is the GDX, uh, the 18-day average of the GDX advanced decline percent. Okay, the I next have. window up yep. is, is the 18-day average of GDX up-down volume percent. Okay. And his, yeah, when history, according to history, and how when both these indicators get above 40, which they did, on April 4th, I got the price there. One got to 45, the other one's about almost 42, over 42. And from there, the market rally leads at least last three months and as high as six months, but a lot of them around the four or five months. So you had, uh, say, four months to August, or so from April, you get August. And a lot of times, seasonality in August is, is used some sort of a high or low in the gold market. So, well, since then, the market has actually backed off then. And what I want to show is the next indicator, um, which is a trend-following indicator. And that's chart two. And this is a 50-day average. The bottom window is a 50-day average of the up-down volume. And the next higher window is a 50-day average of the advanced decline percent okay. uh, for GDX. And... My point is, as long as those are actually, ideally, you want both those indicators above zero. When that happens, you got an uptrend going. And that blue shaded area, uh, this chart goes back to 2009. And now the blue shaded areas are times when both indicators are above zero. And I actually checked today, and uh, 
the current reading for the advanced decline percent, the today average is uh, 9.43, and the uh, up-down volume indicator is, is still over 1, 1.05. So even though the market has pulled back, these indicators are in, uh, updated in a day. So these are current readings. Well, this re I text you uh, yes. where I sent you these charts about four or five hours ago. Right. But I just checked them a few minutes ago, and they're still above uh, zero. And as long as they hold above zero, the trend in general should continue. You can have some, uh, corrections, but in general, it identifies the trend. So in my view, even though we pulled back here. If you do your Fibonacci relationship, your confluence thing, Yes. Uh, if you take the bottom of the October and the bottom of March, uh, the March one comes in 50% retracement. The October one comes in at uh, right around that 31 area, and a 38.2% retracement comes in around 31 area. So you have a kind of confluence of around that 31 area, which pretty much we hit today. So I'm thinking this is not a start of a decline, but since both indicators are above zero, it uh, looks like to me anyhow this this rally is is uh, uh, should continue. I think I don't think there's a um, a top of any consequence here. So right you know, now might be. I want to go back to how we started off, meaning how we used to start it off, because you and I are used to this, and this is this can get confusing sometimes to the audience. And specifically what I mean, folks, is this. And you've seen me do this a dozen times, man, saying, okay, the market's going high, but we get an ABC down, okay? Um, but that's what happens. That, that's the reality, okay? So it's so cool that you yeah. did that, Tim. No, seriously. I mean, because the bottom line is that I, I actually, you know, I'm with you a thousand percent here, man. Um, and that's what's so tricky about the gold market, right? I mean, the gold market loves trading like this, man. You know, it really does. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it did. and actually, uh, you know, I wish I had more. Actually, there, there's one more indicator before we get away from this. Okay. Is on page four, that fourth page. Okay, I have it. That chart four. Yep. And it, it's, there's a lot of different types of sentiment indicators. And I haven't found a really an ideal one yet. But this is a, this is a Sprout, which is basically you, you can buy it and it actually buys you physical gold. The Sprout Fund, and, yep. Yeah, it's a Sprout Fund and, and it's a physical gold fund. So... Anyhow, you can buy it right now for a discount of 1.16%. This is actually yesterday's close. Okay. And when it gets up around 0%, in other words, it's, it's at par, is when times you can have uh, sometimes short-term tops, sometimes intermediate term tops, but at least a short-term top. And we're, we're not even to zero yet. We're still at 1.16%. Uh, so I'm thinking we don't have enough confidence, or I guess we don't have enough well, there's still fear in the market because this thing's still selling at a discount. If it gets down to around three percent at discount, um, which is uh, has been you know major lows in the past. That's where the I the, see uh, the yeah yeah the March the March of 2020 low came went down uh, a three percent discount, and the one we had here just recently that was well it looks like about December of um, of last year. It got down below three percent, but you get up to zero percent, which is all those little blue lines across there in that shaded light area. Okay, that's where we can have um, you can have uh, short term pullbacks. So we're not there yet, so I'm thinking we'll get there maybe in August of this year. Yeah, but uh, I, that kind of reinforces my idea that we're probably, as far as the gold market is concerned, uh, even though there's a little bit of fear out there, this is just a, a kind of a shakeout. Uh, right. Get the weekends out before the next rally uh, uh, becomes. I may change my mind, but according to the indicators today, there's more room to the upside on GDX than actually gold. So, yeah, no, no. Listen, I understand, man. <laughs> you know, it's wild, Tim, because we've been doing this so long, and even when we were trading together in the '90s, it's yeah. it's intriguing and kind of the way that we look at the market that you can actually. What happens, folks, is that you have to be able to flip like this, okay? That's the bottom line. It's not flipping on the longer term. It's that it had the extension coming out, and the bottom line is that you're going to get up, and it seems you have to pull back, and, you know, as Tim is, you know, explaining to you how these are set up, um, you know, in the longer 
picture, it doesn't mean a lot. And the shorter picture, it does, though, because what does happen is that the gold equities themselves move so fast. That's, I mean, that's, yeah. that's what's, you know, always intriguing about um, the gold market in general. You know what I'm saying? You know, so um, pretty yeah. clear. That, that dollar move, Tim, the dollar's moving like crazy, man. I mean, that's what's hitting this thing. There's no doubt. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I really don't follow the dollar that much, but I'm a little kind of surprised that we're down uh, as we, I thought we might hold at the previous highs, but the market's always seems like the trend line stuff and the um, normal technical analysis for gold doesn't work as well. Yeah, you have to kind of find new indicators. To, stay, to, stay right there, Sam. We have a quick, quick break. We're going to bring you right back. Uh, Dow, right. Dow Industrials right now, uh, folks uh, trading. Come on, get up there. Where are we? Uh, whoops. How are we? Up? Dow's down 15, NASDAQ's up 142, S&P's up 23, we're coming back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den and Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. It's our Dow Industrials are up two. You get the Nasdaq up one fifty. S and P's are up twenty five. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord, and you can reach Tim, folks, at Ord dash oracle.com 24 hours a day so tim do you want to stay on this chart are we going to go to another chart what would you like to do uh we go to chart three actually i sent you over another chart um i do a lot of stuff with uh ratios and stuff and yep and uh, did you did you happen to get i sent it to you in an email just a picture of it i got four charts right yeah you got one more i got one more okay cool one second hold it now, go ahead. You can start talking. I'll, I can get it over there. Go ahead. 
All right. Yeah, I, I just, uh, anyhow, the first chart number three, uh, the middle window is the um, SPX, but the, the bottom window is the five-day average of the uh, SPX VIX ratio. And this kind of looks like the big picture. We showed this picture last week. Yep. And I was predicting, uh, well, anyhow, in a nutshell, uh, the bottom window, which is the five-week S- SPX VIX ratio, when that diverges from the S&Ps, you either get a top or you get a bottom. And it works really well at tops. And I pointed out the bigger time frames. Uh, we had the top here back in January 2022. Then that top back in, in what, probably February of 2000, or uh, 20 out of that previous top. Okay. It lighted in, in green there, light green. So now he, the market on the uh, SPX is actually going sideways here since uh, February of this year. I mean, it went down a little bit, came back. We're approximately right around the February highs. We're kind of almost like breaking out right now. But anyhow, if you notice the bottom chart there, the five-week SPX VIX ratio has made higher highs, not lower highs, but higher highs. The SPX VIX ratio leads the way for the S&PX. So that's predicting that the market is not making a top here, but it's building the sideways trading range that was going on since last May. Uh, is going to break out to the upside according to this ratio breaking out above the previous highs. If you yeah, look as at the that Nasdaq ratio, already did, right? Your, your high, pardon? I said as the Nasdaq has already broken out. You know? Yeah, Nasdaq's breaking out. It's leading way. But if you look at this ratio, though, it's higher now than it was back in May of last year. It's the highest high it's been over the last you know year. Um, you can't. So, so anyhow, it leads the way. So we're breaking out to the upside. And if you do the, the analysis here, take the width of the SPX and you add it on over the trading range of the last, well, last year, last 12 months, anyhow, and you add that on, you come back up to probably the um, January 2020 high. I think ultimately we're probably going to hit up there. Whether that's going to be a top or not, don't know, but uh, we're probably at least going to test it. Then from there we'll have to determine it, but... Uh, the market, in my opinion, is, is in uh, is in a, a healthy position. I've I've seen uh, uh, selling climaxes in the uh, McCollin Oscar and along with the summation index, and both of them got in, into uh, what they call initiation of, of the rally type readings. Yeah. Uh, so this sideways pattern is building cause uh, to move up, not uh, to, uh, to move you know back down. This is a halfway point of down, move up. No. It's a bottling process that may go back up and test the January 2022 highs. So, right. I tell. Can can we go oh. through the um, the chart you gave me with the Bollinger Band pinch? Well, uh, oh, uh, this current one. Yes. All right. Yeah, I, I wanted to point that out. It, it's I do a lot of stuff with Bollinger. They're really helpful too. And right. And. Uh, Actually, if you want to make life easy for you, look at the weekly chart. And as long as the stock's above the mid-Bollinger band, the stock's in an uptrend. And that goes along with indexes, too. If if you look at this chart, just going back to far as I, you could go here, if you're along above the mid-Bollinger band, you know, you stayed long for weeks, if not months. And if you look at the you know, the March of 2020 low, or two, yeah, 2020 low, you got in kind of late. But if you got in there, um, you know, you, you would have been long for almost a year all the way up into, um, uh, well, it be January 2020 high, then finally fell below the mid-Bollinger Band. Yes. And in general, we've been above the mid-Bollinger Band since, um, it looks like about, what, uh, February, not February, probably January there or something. And we're still above the mid-Bollinger Band, so... And now your your Bollinger bands are starting to pinch here. When you get a pinching Bollinger band, that means volatility is going to increase. That's what happens in trading ranges. Bollinger bands start to squeeze, yeah. and that trading range is is going to break out. It doesn't tell you what direction, uh, but it tells you instead of moving sideways, you're going to start an impulse wave. So the Bollinger band pinch here suggesting we're pretty close to an impulse wave starting. Yeah, and in my opinion, since 
you know, the five-week SPX-VX ratio is making a bullish divergence here. The breakout, in my opinion, will be to the upside. And you could probably see energy coming to the market maybe starting this month, uh, still maybe June, and uh, possibly, you know, rally uh, through the summer. That's how, yes. uh, because of the Bollinger Band pinch, and and it looks bullish. Uh, so, You know, I, I remember, Tim, that when we actually used to have, uh, you know, John Bollinger on quite a bit, and, uh, you know, what happens, folks, is that this is now I'm going back to the 90s, but it's crazy because that's when I remember specifically Yahoo was riding this band and he was speaking about the aspect that it can ride that band for so long. It's amazing. Right. So, yeah, yeah. this is always intriguing yeah. watching how these uh, bands shake out, man. But I, I like I like how it's set up. There's no doubt. Yeah. This this is, this may stay above the you know we've been above the Bollinger Band for you know quite a few uh, weeks now yeah and so we we may start to trend but it's a good intermediate term indicator you know you don't have to uh, I mean you get whipped around a little bit but right in trends it stays above the mid Bollinger Band and it just stays there for months and months so it's a heck of a good trend so um, but yeah, there's a lot of bullishness in, in the market and you know you look at uh, I do some stuff with cinema too. I do that individual investor thing, and okay. and uh, they're pretty, I didn't have that chart shown because I didn't think we'd have time to get to it. But, yeah, uh, they're pretty much uh, in the doldrums, and and you know you have your clients probably talking to you about there's no way this market's going to be bullish with you know whatever reason. Yep, and it, it defines the odds. You know, it's uh, it you does define the odds. Everybody yes. on one side of the fence, you want to be on the other side of the fence. So right. So, you got to love so, it, right? So, yeah. Let me ask you this: What you know, just in general, we only got like a minute left. But in general, like, what have you thought about the market like the last five or ten years in general? Um, I don't know. There's statistic out there to give you a statistic. Seventy-four percent of the time, going back to 1950, the market's been up. Yeah, exactly. And dividends is 81%. Okay. So you really don't want to bet against the market. But if you get, you know, big declines, they come every once in a while. We had one, obviously, starting in January 2020. Yes. But, you know, they really define those bottoms. What, what I've learned over the years is you got to go where the panic is. If you don't get panic, you don't have a bottom. So I learned over the years right. that as long as you, you get plenty of panic, you know, you want to buy those bottoms and ride the trend up. Because in general, 75% of the time, the market's up every year. Ride so. it on up, baby. Tim Ord. <laughs> Listen, man, you have a great one. Safe one. We'll talk to you next week, Tim. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. 
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. At Dow, Dow Industrials right now trading up 52. We get the Nasdaq up uh, 167. We get the S and P's up 32. Let's go to our man Frank and Gloucester. Frank, what's going on, brother? Hey, how you doing, Tommy? I'm doing it's, great, uh... man. Yourself? A little chilly up here. Had to cover up the garden last night. Really? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it was a big frost inland. Not so much here on the coast, but uh, that's wild, yeah, man. Not, well, thirty-seven here last night here. <laughs> thirty-seven. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that that's hard to comprehend, but I do understand that the good old New England weather. So. The good news, the good news yeah. is, is that uh, that fleeting uh, cold weather. It'll be right back to 67 pretty soon, right? Well, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's in the 60s here the next week or two, so Beautiful. that's good. good. So, so anyway, I had this crazy thought, and I thought maybe you could help me with it or straighten me out. Uh, seems to me it would be nice, and I've seen people talk about and write about uh, locking in high interest rates in bonds in an environment like this yes and uh, i'm wondering you know government bonds that they're not only the short durations are paying something decent these days maybe corporate bonds and then i'm also looking at these mortgage reits some of which are paying exorbitant uh dividends uh any ideas on that i'd stay away from the mortgage reits the way okay. that works so the way a mortgage reit works folks is that they're they're leveraging the position quite a bit. That's how they pay those, out, you know, outrageous dividends. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's I, I'd stay away from that. I mean, when you when you look at let's just look at these governments for a second here. So we put this over here. You got. I mean, I know what you're saying on, on a longer term basis, Frank. But, you know, I guess the, the best thing I can say to you is that the two years are only at 4.2. That's not bad, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, not bad, huh? Okay. Well, that, it's not good. we know how this goes. That everything that's above those, do you know what I mean, it comes with risk. Um, I, w I, I would stay, you know, away from those high dividend REITs, though, because the way that the way a high dividend REIT works is this. So picture this. Let's picture if we're doing a deal. They will they will first deal, they have a limited partner. They'll, you have a general partner, you have a limited partner, folks. OK, so then they come in and make the deal. Let's just call it a hundred million dollar apartment building or something. OK, so that's a hundred million dollar apartment building. Then what ends up happening is that at the beginning of this deal, let's say that they got, you know, 20, 30 million into it between the, the general and the limited, right? Then what ends up happening is that they turn around and leverage that up like a borrow money at the bank in a, in a pretty incredible way. And so you have the tax, it's a tax efficient way of basically making good money as long as all these rents keep coming in and they can pay the interest rate structure. Do you know what I'm saying? Because what ends up happening is that you, the, the partnership itself is gonna get the depreciation on it 
and they're going to get the interest rate structure on it, but that's why they can pay, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 percent. When you see those numbers, to me, that's always a problem. You know, I, I've seen that they've never yeah. stayed. And, and what has happened, there's no doubt that the commercial real estate has not fallen apart yet. OK. Right. OK. And we'll see whether it does. You know, um, you know what happened last time, if you remember 2007, 2008, it yeah. looked like it was going to fall apart. I mean, San Francisco, you can buy buildings right now at basically 30 to 40 cents on the dollar. Um, you know, but people are going to go back to work, you know. So if they can last this out another three or four years, I think, you know, there's some of these REITs are probably going to be OK. But it's too much yeah. to me. It's too much of a risk to go into something that you think you're going to get 12 or 13 percent. And then all of a sudden you don't. And, yeah. you know, simultaneously, then the principal gets hit. Do you know what I mean? I get it, though, Frank. I get it. Do you know what I mean? Back in the 80s and into the 90s, I was saving like crazy for college for my three kids. Yes. And uh, I put a lot of the money into mortgage funds. Right. And uh, they were mutual funds in those days. Yes. Uh, and it paid up. I, I don't remember what the rate was, but it paid a great dividend. And, of course, by the time uh, things came back down, the kids were into college, and I had already spent the money, so I couldn't lose it. Uh, anything like that? I don't see anything out like that. You know, it doesn't mean it's not out there, Frank, but I just I just don't. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, do you remember in Boston, folks, the last, uh, what well, wasn't the last get-go? I think it was in the 90s. The Wang Building. Remember the Wang Building? The Wang Building. Oh, folk, yeah. yeah. I'll buy it every day. for to work. Yeah. Wasn't it? So the Wang Building, folks, uh, it was a building that was worth, let's say, a couple hundred million, and it went on auction, and someone got it for like three million bucks or two million bucks. It was some outrageous sale. It was unbelievable, actually. Yeah. Um, but, you know, those deals are out there. But, you know, inside the aspect of, you get the gist of it. I just don't see it. I just don't see it. All right. I'll, I'll keep hunting. Good cooking, brother. Have a great one, man. Have right. a safe one. Let's go take a look at the, so you just, we just had an uplift here, big time coming in. They just had a spike in the S&Ps. So we take a look at this. That spike had volume, by the way, too. Yeah, look at this. That broke. So what this is saying, this is, this is where it's, when we, you're going to see that now that means that we hit this number that we started the show off at. I suspect it hit it anyway. Yeah, four. Yeah, we did. We hit four. Okay, so, so the four eighteen thirty ones hit. You're at four nineteen. You hit four nineteen sixteen. So now your benchmark again is four eighteen thirty one. That's how this thing shakes out. We'll see what happens today. Tomorrow's tomorrow's going to be the big day, folks. Okay, uh, on the on the weekly. You know, on the daily here, we'll see whether the, this. I suspect this is going to hold out here today, uh, because you only get well ten minutes is a long time to, sometimes, but. Uh, what we just did have is that you had this on volume also. So we pull this back. And what you're going to see, look at that, look at that bar. And you can see, you know, it's so cool technically, folks, okay, that you can see, you know, the, you have plenty of fundamentalists that trade the market. But the bottom line is that traders were looking exactly for this high. That they were going right back to that high. And they're saying, okay, we're going to go after this high. And that's exactly what they did. You go, um, let me, I just want to see if the dollar pulled back a bit. Because the dollar, no, it didn't. So this market's going higher with the dollar higher. That's pretty intense. You know, this dollar, it's up 646. And, you know, this thing is game, man. It's game to, you know, 105, 106. That's how this thing is shaking out right now. So this volatility is going to continue. And as Tim was just saying, what's going to be really interesting is that, the expectation that the the volatility could continue, but yet simultaneously he's looking for that market to go a lot higher, and we know that the Nasdaq already broke out. That's 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 the reality. So, Dow Dow Industrials right now up 105. We get the Nasdaq up 186. S&Ps are up 39. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up 128, NASDAQ up 189, S&P's up 40. Look at that thing, man. It just didn't stop. We go into the Dow Industrials. We take a look at the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow. And point-wise out here, this is what we have. You have... Come on, baby. Microsoft uh, putting 31 positive points. You got uh, Salesforce 27. Home Depot, 18, nothing really big. And, you know, oh, it's only up 120. That's what's going on. Uh, uh, taken away from it, you got uh, United Health, minus 39. We got Procter & Gamble, minus 16. You got uh, Chevron, minus 11. Inside the NDX 100, we take a look at the NDX 100. Inside the NDX 100, Netflix. Netflix up 8.5%. You got Synapsis up 8.5%. Uh, Copart, uh, that's... Uh, Parts for cars, that is up 7.5%. Uh, and, and Cadence Design, up 6.5%. Uh, Taken away from it. Pindo Do is down 7.5%. You get JD.com off 4 t T-Mobile's off 2.5%. Let's go over and take a look at uh, Cadence Design. So inside Cadence, the low for Cadence of the year is 135. The high is 217. And it's going right after these highs again. Look at this thing. Oh, look at that move today. Oh, what did they just come out with numbers today? Let's see. That was quite a move, man. 
Huh, not sure, but that's a, that's a big number, man. There's no doubt about that. Volume-wise out here, let's see what we have happening. So volume-wise, you're at 561 on the NYSE. We take a look at the composite. The composite is at four. Well, they're gonna have to throw some good volume here and here at the end. Uh, we actually are gonna have light volume, you know? Always remember, folks, the bank can claw your heart out. The bull can run you over. And thank God, there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 a.m. Great show, folks. Look at him, folks.